as the song says, I know where my help comes from. Yeah. Amen. You know where your help comes from. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Y'all got to wake up this morning. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. I bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. We are in the house of God, and this is a Sunday that we celebrate. Praise God, our resurrected Savior. Amen. It's an exciting time to remember. But for the life of the believer, we remember it all the time. Praise God, because that's what we base our life on. Praise God. But the song says, when I wake up, praise God, I will forever, ever be thankful. Praise God. And if I can give him the praise, I'm going to give him the praise. Praise God. But the Lord allowed us to wake up. He allowed us to be able to move and come to the house of the Lord. That in itself is worth a praise. Amen. We cannot take life for granted. Amen. And I tell you, just be thankful for the breath that's in your body. Praise God. But well, we appreciate the Lord. I appreciate all of you taking time to come out because I know it's a holiday season, and so holiday time, folk like to spend it with family and friends, and so I appreciate you taking this time to come to the house of the Lord and celebrate with us, and you'll have plenty of time for your family and friends after the service, amen. So we appreciate you putting us on the list, amen. Well, we're going to get ready to get right into our word. Those that are able, if you'll stand with me as we go to um, Ephesians, praise God, the first chapter, praise God, and we want to start down at verse 18, amen, praise God. Ephesians 1, praise God, beginning at verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of the mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power, might and dominion, and every name that is named not only in this age, but that also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I've just read the New King James uh, Version, praise God, of Ephesians 1 verses 18 through 23. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we bless you and we thank you for this appointed time to declare your word. Father, we speak now that your word will go forth unhindered, that the word will fall on good soil, that it may take root and produce the fruit that you desire in the name of Jesus. We yield this time unto you, Lord, that you may have thine way in the mighty name of Jesus. This is your service, Father, so do what you will as you will. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. And as I begin to meditate on the word for the day, and first of all, let me just thank everyone that came out Wednesday night at Evan Solid Rock during the True Believers uh, Fellowship Ministry Revival Week to support as I was a speaker and we were hosting uh, that service there on Wednesday night, I thank everyone that came out in support, praise God, and, and the word that the Lord sent that night. And so God just adding to that word this morning. And so if I had to use for a topic, it'd be the authority of the Christ, part two of it is finished. So those that couldn't make it Wednesday night, you'll get a taste of Wednesday night, and then you'll get a little bit added on this morning, praise God, as we begin to look at this particular passage of Scripture here. Now, as we begin to look at the Scripture that read, praise God, we as believers have to understand that the cross is the basis of everything that we base our life on. It's the basis of what we as believers have to look forward to and what we move on right now. So if we forget what took place at the cross, we're in trouble. Because that means 
we don't know some benefits and things that is allotted to us because of what was done at the cross. Now, in Ephesians 1, praise God, and depending on what version you read, if you look up there at um, verse 14, it says, who is the guarantee of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory? And some translations might say the pledge of our inheritance, praise God. But basically, verse 13, it takes talking about us being sealed with the Holy Spirit. In him who also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the prize of his glory. Praise God. In other words, the Holy Spirit sealed everything for us, praise God, until our redemption. And as I say, some translations read the pledge of our inheritance. And so in other words, what it's saying is, you don't have to wait to get to heaven to have a taste of heaven. Praise God. Amen. Because what he's saying is the work that was done at the cross. Praise God. When he rose from that cross, when he rose from the grave after all of that was over, he took back the authority that the enemy had. Praise God. And he transferred that authority to us as the believer. Praise God. But you know, even though it says that it is a pledge of our inheritance or our guarantee. Sometimes you don't understand what you got because you don't always read the manual. Praise God. Amen. I give you a good example. Most everybody got smartphones these days. Amen. That phone will do a whole lot more than what we use it for. Very few of us use that phone to the very full capability. Matter of fact, most of us don't know how to use some of the stuff that's on the phone. And a manual came with it or instructions came with it, but we ain't read them instructions because we say all I need this thing to do is call and answer when somebody calls. And so that's what we use it for, but the phone is a mini computer in itself. Do any and everything that we need it to do. Now, what is that saying to us? We ain't read our manual. What belongs to us is in the manual. And there are a lot of benefits in the manual that we don't understand. That's because we ain't taking time to go to the manual and search out the benefits that's been given. Our phones will do so much, but we haven't taken the time to learn how to use all the features on the phone or to read the instructions that came with the phone. Praise God. And what God is saying in this particular passage of Scripture here, as he begins to talk about, praise God, that the cross is where we must really understand because that's where we gain the authority to walk in what we're walking in. Praise God. And if you go up in Ephesians 1 to verse 3, it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. He says he has blessed, B-L-E-S-S-E-D. It's already past tense, so we've already been blessed, praise God, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us before the foundation of the world. So what is it saying to us? He doesn't give us everything that he's going to give us, and it's already waiting for us, but we got to walk in the authority to receive it in the now. It's already there. So it's in the will. But if you don't go execute the will, you ain't going to get the benefits of what's in the will. That's what the word is saying here to us. Amen. So it's in there. But once we begin to investigate and we begin to take our right and know what our benefits are, we can begin to claim 
those in benefit those benefits now in the old testament praise god the saints were looking forward with anticipation of the promise that the Messiah was coming and was going to re redeem them. But we in the New Testament, praise God, we look back to the cross to see what's already been done. And so in other words, we get to experience the promise that the old saints was looking for. But because they were looking in great anticipation based on the promise that was made, it kept them focused and on point. Praise God. Now that they were on point and it kept them going and a lot of them didn't get to see the fullness of the promise but they was moving because they know whom has spoken that promise was true and able to bring it to pass so it kept them on the path now we as a new testament believer praise god when we look back to the cross and understand what the cross was doing that was god's way of redeeming us back from the hands of the enemy praise God because in order for us to be saved there had to be some shedding of blood praise God and it says that we the Word of God lets us know that while we were in our trespasses while we were in our sins he died for us it won't no fault of our own but it was because of Adam and Eve when they disobeyed God they turned it over to the enemy Satan himself, and so Satan had a, a certain amount of authority because it was given to him to, through Adam and Eve disobedience. But God says, I'm going to redeem, and, I'm, and redeem means I'm going to buy them back. I'm going to take care of that debt that's against them because they belong to me. And I'm going to bring them back to the Father because I created them not to be serving satan but i created them to show praise to me and my father praise god made after our own image and i'm not gonna let satan keep him he may have the authority for a while because it was given to him but i already got a plan in place to bring him back and when we as the believers understand that the cross was the plan to turn that thing around and bring us back with the authority that was originally given to us because had they turned Satan down, we'd still been in paradise. We wouldn't be dealing with a whole lot of mess we're dealing with today. But because they turned the authority over, it gave Satan a little bit of heyday. So he decided he's going to mess with us because technically we, was we were guilty. Praise God. So it ain't no doubt that we were guilty, but it won't no fault of our own that we was guilty. But God says, I'm going to take care of that because I'm taking it back. He let Satan think he could rule for a while, but he decided that he was going to take it back. Now, as we begin to look at this particular passage of Scripture here, if you look there at verse 20, praise God, it says, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places far above all principality, power, might, and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come so anything that rises up today in this age and the age to come it says that Christ has already been seated at the right hand of God the Father and he is above everything that could ever be named and that might come up. So that means every problem that I'm dealing with, every circumstance that I'm dealing with, we know somebody that is above what we're dealing with. And every person that's trying to give us a hard time, we know somebody that's got the authority above them. Amen? Praise God because it says every name that is named, we know somebody that is above that which is Jesus Christ. That is what the work of the cross done for the believer. Praise God. It gave us an advocate because Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father and he's making intercession on our behalf. So when we're going through something, Jesus is there praying for us. Praise God. And he's telling the Father, they mine because I bought them with my blood. Amen. Praise God. And so we've got to understand what our authority is. Praise God. And so when the folk get to messing with you, that means even Satan himself, when he's messing with you or he's sending his imps 
to mess with you, it doesn't mean that our life is going to be easy because of we belong to the Lord. Matter of fact, it, we just become a target because we make the devil mad because we left his camp and joined sides with Jesus. So he got upset because he lost us. I ain't got to mess with you when you belong to me. But when you decide you're going to leave me, I got to go do something to try to bring you back. And so with that being said, he tried to create a lot of, uh, of, of hassles, a lot of tension, a lot of problems in our lives to bring discouragement. He tried to get us to see that the harder I try, don't look like the further I get pushed back. It seems like every time I attempt to do what's right, somebody's over there trying to discredit what I'm trying to do. The good that I would do, somebody is talking about the good that I would do and trying to turn it around. Praise God. And even when I keep pushing, they keep trying to find fault with what's going on, praise God. That's the job of the devil because his job is to come and steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus' job is to come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. And the cross lets us understand, praise God, that he bought back the authority and put it into our hands that we no longer have to let the devil run all over us. And since we don't have to let the devil run all over us, we don't have to let the devil folks run over us either. Praise God. So that boss you're dealing with, that co-worker you're dealing with, that family member you're dealing with, you ain't got to let them run over you. We respect all folk, but we're intimidated by nobody. Because if the devil don't intimidate us, why are we going to let his folk intimidate us? Praise God. Because we know somebody that can take care of the model. Praise God. And if you need to understand, we need to understand the difference between power and authority. And as we begin to reflect on this passage of Scripture, God just kind of brought into focus and clarity to me is sometimes we get power and authority mixed up. Yes, he sealed us with his Holy Spirit, which gave us power and authority to use his name. But we ain't doing that. We're not walking in the authority like we should. See, authority is the right use of power. Now let, me, now, let me give you an example there so we can be clear on this thing. Most of y'all folk, a lot of y'all in here, athletes, y'all like sports. So any sport that you got, football, basketball, or whatever, you got the players, and then you got the referees or the coach. I've referees out there, right? The players is playing the game, but guess what? You got some referees out there to watch while they're playing that game. Now, the referee might be a little old, might be a little slow, might be a little overweight. But understand this, when you make the wrong move and the referee make the call, the game ceases because the referee got the authority to make a call on the move that you just made. So you don't get to get away with it if you break the rule of the game. Now, what is that saying to us? God gave us the authority. And so when Satan pulls something on us, instead of trying to fight him with our power and fussing him out and doing all that kind of stuff, just stop right there and say, wait a minute. According to the word of God, it is written. I'm not speaking in and of myself. But I'm speaking to you in the name of Jesus. And the word have told me that he sets far above every principality, every dominion, and every name that is named. And since he's above you, you have no right to hold against me what you're trying to bring. It's not by my might and it's not by my power, but it is by the spirit of God. We got the authority. And when we pull the authority rank on him, he can't do nothing. Because we really have the authority. He don't have the authority, but he's going around like a lion. Like he got all the power and the authority. And if you see him as a lion, you're going to get afraid of him and back up and let him run over you. See, that's just like somebody got a gun on you. But if the gun ain't got no bullets in it, it ain't no good. 
But see, the thing of it is, you have to understand there ain't no bullets in the gun. But as long as you think that there are bullets in the gun, you're going to follow instruction. Because he who holds the gun is in charge right then. But if there ain't no bullets in that gun, oh, nah, uh-uh, I'm getting ready to show you a thing or two. And we need to understand that. And so, according to what the cross done, Satan has got a gun with no bullets. Because Jesus took back the authority that he had. And he let him know, all power has been taken from you and back to me. And then he turned around and told the disciples, I'm going to give it to you. Praise God. Let's go over there and look at that. Uh, now, we got to see this in Colossians. Praise God. I want to go to the second chapter, and I want to say it's down there about verse 13. Yes. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. So let no one judge you in food, drink, or regarding a festival, or a new moon, or a Sabbath, which is a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Let no one cheat you out of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which has not seen vanity puffed up by his fleshly mind and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grow with the increase that is from God. Now, the important part that I want you to see right there in 14, having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements. And some book says certificate of decrees or some kind of uh, whatever, handwrite, uh, some kind of ordinance or whatever. But what basically this theory or this thought was taken from a Roman tradition when someone was guilty or accused of a, of a crime and they got charged with that crime, crime, they would write out, take a certificate, and they would write out everything that this person was guilty of and what they was being charged with. And while they were in jail, locked up, this certificate certified that they had legitimate reason to hold them in prison because here is the list of crimes that they were guilty of, okay? Now, that's important for us to understand because the word tells me that in, in um, here at the cross, it says, having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that was against us. In other words, at the cross, the work that was done at the cross, we were guilty because the, if you just read a sentence right above that, it says, while dead in our trespasses. So we was in our sins. So we were guilty. And because we were guilty, God sent his son. And what Jesus said is, you were guilty, but because I was redeeming you and repurchasing you back to the Father. When I went to the cross, that certificate that stated all of the sin that you committed, Everything that we were guilty of, praise God, because I'm including that list too, so I, I don't want to, you know, sometimes I get excited, and it might look like I'm just talking to you, but I'm talking to me too, because I am not exempt. I was sinning too, amen. amen? Praise God. So all of my sins, your sins, and everything else that the devil accuses of, we were guilty of, because the word says, while we was in our trespasses, he went to the cross for us. But he says, when I went to that cross for you, he says, I took that certificate of everything that Satan accused you of, and he said it was nailed to the cross. It was nailed to the cross. You got to understand that now so you know who you are. And if it was nailed to the cross, Satan thought it was over with when they nailed Jesus to the cross. But Jesus had already let it folk know three days later, I'm coming up out in that grave. 
but I must go through this because I'm getting ready to pay the price to redeem y'all back to me. Praise God. And so when they nailed him to the cross, Satan thought he had him. He was celebrating, praise God. But the word let me know here. See, we always talk about Sunday morning. He got up out in the grave and, and rose from the grave. But on Saturday, he decided to take a visit where Satan was. He says, I disarmed all them principalities and power. So on Saturday, he was cleaning house in Satan's camp. Let's bring it on down to earth. He was cleaning house in Satan's camp. He went down there to set all the folk that Satan had captive up to that point, he said, you're free now because I'm up out in the grave. I done shed my blood. And because my blood's been shed, you've been made free. Get up and go. Satan can't hold you no more. Satan down there partying with his imps. Praise God that we done killed him now, boys. He's out of the way. And this world is free cause. That's what he thought until Jesus showed up at the door. Praise God. He says, I'm in here to clean house now. All of my folk that's gone on. Been in holding pattern because, see, Satan used death to hold the saints in old. Praise God. That's what he used over them. But when Jesus went to that cross and got back up and he went to Satan's path, he told him, death can't hold him now. I done set him free. And it says all of them went on about their way throughout the city. Praise God. Because the word says he disarmed all the principalities and all of the powers. He said, that certificate that Satan was using against you, accusing you of what you've done, what you have done, and all of that, because you accepted the work of the cross, you need to understand it was nailed at the cross. Because, see, in Roman culture, when that person served their time, that certificate that they had listing everything, it got tore up. Got tore up. Because they served the time, you couldn't hold it against them no more. When Jesus said it was nailed to the cross, all the list of stuff that Satan accused you of and said you're guilty of and I was guilty of and all of that, when Jesus came up off the cross, <laughs> go. Right. And when Satan brings it up and comes back to you and says, well, you know what you're doing. You know you were guilty. What you got to do is stop him right there. I was guilty, but the price was paid because what you were bringing up against me was nailed to the cross. And when Jesus got up out of that grave, he went down and he disarmed and set all his folk free. So his blood that he shed for me means that I'm no longer guilty of what you say I was guilty of. Oh, yeah, I was guilty. But his blood covered me and set me free. So I'm free from that. You can't hold that over my head. Because there is no more certificate listing what I done. And see, not only did the work cover what was done beforehand, it covered what was going to be happening even after that. Now, that don't give us a privilege and a license to keep sinning and doing all of that. But let me tell you, your future sins was covered too. That's why the word says that you were sealed with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the guarantee of promise. That was the pledge so that when you believed in the work that was done for you, that thing was sealed. And you need to know that it was sealed because, see, if you don't know that it's sealed, when Satan shows up, when you mess up, you feel bad because you know you're wrong. But the thing is, yes, I messed up, but God already paid for my messed up. And I'm sorry about my mess up. And so he told me that when I ask him to forgive me, he says, I'll be faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So I'm not, I was guilty, but you can't hold it against me because he nailed it to the cross. He's helping me overcome that. And I stand on the authority and my faith is in Jesus Christ. So if you're going to deal with me, you better see the blood. And the last time that I read, it says that, he was far above all principalities, dominion and power. Not just above, but far above. And he says, every name that was named. So that means every sickness, every disease, every problem, every issue that may ever come my way, it was nailed to that cross as well. Now, I have to understand that 
so I can walk in that authority. And see, and I'm getting ready to bring this thing to a close here, but what happens is we don't always understand our authority because we haven't read the manual. And if we looked at the manual, we did some thumbing. We didn't get in detail. So you know how it is, is if you just flip through it a little bit, you'll catch just bits and pieces. You don't get the full value of it. But let, let, me, let me go here and just kind of reiterate this one thing here. Let me see. Go to Ephesians 2, around verse 5. We're gonna, I'm going to read verse 4, 4 and 5, maybe 6. It says, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Did you catch that? Made us sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. The issue is we know that Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father. But we fail to remember that there were some seats beside Jesus. Because the word says he made us sit together with Jesus Christ Amen. in heavenly places, which means he's given us spiritual authority because we're sitting in one of them seats over there by Jesus. But we operating like we still down here on earth. Now understand that we are on earth because the word says, we are down here or we are in this world, but we are not of this world. And what that is telling us that we need to do, we need to understand that we are seated in spiritually places in heaven, in the heavens. But we are down here on this earth and we operating on this earth, but earth is not our home. And what it means is if I'm going to deal with what's happening down here on earth, since I'm a spiritual being with an earthly body, and I'm, my spirit is sitting up there in the heavenly places with Jesus, that means I got to start looking at it from a spiritual perspective. Amen. If I look at it from a human perspective, I'm going to get human results. But because I understand that I am a spiritual being, I'm in this world but not of this world, that tells me I can't think like this world. I can't act like this world. I got to think like the world that I'm a part of, which is the spiritual world with Jesus Christ. And so when I look at it according to his word, that means I'm now thinking spiritually and I'm looking for spiritual results. And when I look for spiritual results, the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of me gives me the authority and the power to walk out what was left in this wheel. And Satan can't do a thing about it. As long as I stay on this word, he can rave all he want, but he can't do nothing about it. Just why the word reminds us that he is, goes about as a roaring lion. As a roaring lion is like a shadow of a lion, and you know and I know that the shadow can't hurt you. But if you don't understand that it's just a shadow and the real thing is not there, you hurt yourself. He is as a roaring lion. In other words, he acting like he got all the power and all the authority, but he has absolutely none unless we give it to him. Because our power is in the spiritual being. And when we operate according to that word, we're calling on the heavenly force to back us up. That's where our power lies. Not in our, because if we do it in the power, we're going to do it in the human means. And we're going to get all worked up and doing all this stuff. See, that, that's why I said the church really kind of messed this thing up a little bit because they done made salvation so hard or make it look like it's harder than it is and make like the word is so difficult. The word ain't difficult. Man just messed it up because they tried to make it difficult by adding all their rules and everything else instead of just taking time to see what was Jesus saying and then just following him and quit trying to dress the stuff up according to what was going to fit their guideline. But when you get to the Word and you start digging in the Word, that's why sometimes you just got to read the manual for yourself. See, somebody can show you how to operate your phone, and they're going to get you a couple of points, but they don't even know how to do all the stuff. 
The one that made the phone know how to do it. The one that made us know all about us, and he knows exactly what makes us tick. That's why we got to go back to this manual because it judges our spirit being. And it gives us the instructions on how we're going to get the help that we need to get through what we're dealing with when we remember that we're part of God's kingdom and we're just here on this earth as pilgrims passing through. Because we ain't living just to stay here all the time. We're living for that greater home because this earth going to get wiped out. And we want to make sure we cover it in eternity in heaven and not in hell. Because we can't stand the heat down here and we sure don't want to live in heat forever. So we want to be in the God's kingdom. And to be in God's kingdom, he reminds you, you got to think like I think and do like my word says. That's why he says walk by faith and not by sight. Because, see, the world walks by sight. They go by what they see, what they know, what they've been taught in school, and what they have figured out, trial and error. But the Bible is totally different. It do just the opposite. Everything in that word that seems like that ain't going to work because it goes opposite of what we used to see. That's what makes it so difficult sometimes to walk by faith because guess what? We grew up with the earthly perspective a lot longer than a lot of us been saved. And we've been taught the earthly perspective. And so it takes a minute to change the, the thinking of your mind. That's why the word says we got to have the renewing of our minds. And see, that's why when you get saved and you mess up, it's easy for the devil to pull you back because you know you're done wrong and you feel bad about doing wrong and he just blow the thing all out of perspective. Then when somebody you got respect in the church, they ran around, I told you they weren't going to make it. They just going to mess up and was going right back. Didn't you know they came from a family of drunkards and, and all these other folk, men running women and doing all that stuff? They just like the daddy. They just like the mama. And so you, you thought they were good church folk. Now you're hearing them talking the same stuff that the folk in the world that ain't thinking about church saying the same stuff. So you like, ain't no need of this. And you go back to what you already know. But that ain't God's way. That's why you got to get into the manual for yourself. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. Now, when I give you stuff and give you these scriptures, you need to go back and meditate on them scriptures so that you can get them. Now, thank God that he gave me a pretty good analogy to help break some of this scripture down. But when you go back, it can highlight with you. That's why Paul was praying when he was writing. He said that the eyes of the understanding be open so that you could understand as you read. Because, see, when you understand, Satan is standing there with an unloaded gun. You ain't going to fear him so much because there ain't no bullets in the gun. So if there ain't no bullets in the gun, he can't shoot me. He can say he's going to shoot me, but there ain't nothing to shoot me with. So you can stand there and, 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 and take your ground. But now when you start declaring your authority, Guess what? He got to take his empty gun and get out in the way because he can't stand up against that name because Jesus is above that name. Every name that is named, it says, in the earth, on the earth, and under the earth. So there is none above, greater. And when I operate, he says, because you're mine, you just use my name. So when you show up and you said, I come to do such and such, they said, can't help you. You said, who's in charge? Let me get above you. You know how we do. You go to the store, the clerk doing the best they can do, and they ain't getting you the results you want. You want to know where your supervisor, supervisor don't work, you want to know where the manager. Manager don't want to work, you want to know where the general manager. You keep going up the chain because you got to get somebody with a higher authority that has the right to make that decision. When we mess with Satan, we already know the highest authority. And because we belong to him, we go straight to the authority and say, in the name of Jesus, according to the word, it is written. And so you have no authority. Now move on because this is what I stand on. And if you try to cross that, then you're going to have to deal with Jesus. And he going to remember how Jesus turned out his camp and he got no power because he said he made a show of them openly. In other words, Satan got whipped in front of all his demon imps. 
Now, you know, that's a shame when you get beat in front of your boys and your, your little partners and your little team there. You look kind of bad then. Because, see, they thought you was all of that. Now somebody shows up that you've been talking junk about, and then they just let you know who was in charge. See, you talking all that junk, they won't say nothing. But when you called the bluff, they showed up on the fight. And when they showed up, it was over. And now you don't look so bad. He made them ashamed. He did it openly. And so every time that comes up, Satan remember, I got whipped, so I better get on up out of the way. Because they know who they are. And since they know who they are, I might well leave them alone because I can't win. But now if I mess with somebody that don't know who they are, oh, boy, I can keep pushing them around a little bit. See, that's just like a bullet. Keep pushing you, keep nagging, because he can get away with it. But when you realize, I'm tired of this, no, sir, uh-uh, ain't so, and you handle business, you ain't going to have no more problem out of them. You know, and I always share this analogy, and I'm closing with this very analogy right here. I was always the quiet, low-key person, mind my own business, you know, didn't try to get in no trouble. And, and these folk kept pushing this boy to mess with me all the time. Because we, when I was growing up, the high schoolers and the elementary, everybody rode the same bus. Because we went to the different schools and dropped y'all. And they kept telling that boy, go on and, and, and hit him and push him and do all that. He ain't going to do nothing. I told him, you got three chances. I ain't sit there and argue, didn't do none of that stuff. First time he, he hit, up, hit me, I said, that's it. Next time, I said, it was three. On that third time, they told me, go ahead on, he ain't going to do nothing. That third time, I ain't say nothing, but I went on him so quickly. And when I started beating him, I'm just beating the boy, and I'm telling him, I thought you could fight. Because, see, I done seen the boy fight before. I thought he could fight. But I done had enough, and I was wearing him out. And I want you to know, after that point, oh, that boy hung with me then. Oh, it, didn't nobody come my way no more because he was with me. I won't scare the boy, and I was trying to tell the boy I won't scare him, but I was taught, mind your business and try to stay out of trouble. But when I give you your limit, you got your limit. But when you cross number three, that was the number I gave you, so it was over with then because I was going after you. And I'm so glad the Lord saved me early because, see, I was of that philosophy that if I had to whip you, I need to go on and eliminate you because I don't need you coming back later. So I'm so glad the Lord saved me because my thing was you need to be wiped out. I mean, I wasn't going to just whip you and leave you. No, nah, you need to be gone because I ain't want to see you no more. And so I'm thankful that God saved me because I might have been locked up today or six feet under somewhere because I wasn't going to play that stuff. And I just thank God that he just helped me. But do you understand that when you know who you are in Christ and you know where you are seated, so when you remember that you're seated in heavenly places as well, you have the right to use that spiritual authority. And when you walk in that spiritual authority, it's not you handling it, but it's the Spirit of God through you taking care of what needs to take care of. And the devil cannot do anything with Jesus. But when we operate on our own, he's going to wear us out because he's been at the game too long. But now when we operate through the Spirit of God, he's going to get up out of the way when he knows that you really understand who you are and you mean business because he knows it's a no-win situation. So whatever you're dealing with, you might be dealing with it, and it might be real, but as I say, you need to speak to it according to the authority of the word and understand and say it's happening, but it don't have a right to keep happening, and it does not have a right to exist because I'm standing on the authority and I'm putting Jesus above this who can override what's going on now. Amen. And when I do that, we just have to walk faithfully and let God bring it to pass. We thank God for his word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The choir may come. Praise God. And as the choir is coming, if you're here this morning and you're outside of the family of God, 
your salvation is based on your faith in God's word and the work that was already been done. It ain't based on how you feel. It's based on what his word says and whether you believe the word and the work that was done. He offered it to us as a gift, and when you accept that gift, then you are born again. And when you're born again, that means you are like a newborn babe. You're growing, so that means you're going to get everything right tomorrow. Because it is a growth process, and you got to learn how to walk this out. A newborn baby is born today, but they ain't walking tomorrow. They got to get developed, and then they start taking steps. And when they start taking steps, they fall, but they get up and keep getting up. Then they're able to walk. It's the same thing with our salvation. The devil tricks folk and think that when I get saved, everything got to be all right. No, I'm working on it because my salvation is already sealed because of the work that was done. But now what I got to do is learn how to walk it out according to the word. But I'm sealed. And that's the difference that we need to know and understand. You may come and we'll share with you the word. Or if you were already part of the family and drifted away and you just want to make a public declaration that I'm coming back in my rightful spot, he says in his word,